Alright guys, Hatch Crown back again today. Hope you're doing good and enjoying your day so far. The off-season is now well underway and Rostermania is a big discussion point going around the community. Players will be talking to each other behind the scenes and discussing potential options going into 2024 on the Modern Warfare 3 season. Pred though is one of the biggest name free agents we presently have. Will he join Optic as expected or are there other options on the table? Could Los Angeles Thieves be a viable option for many different reasons that we shall dive into here in the coming minutes? Very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button on if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it first of all wanted to mention this i got this in my emails yesterday from the cdl actually wanting to know my thoughts on the championship weekends so they actually i do believe listen to this feedback so there's a feedback form if you guys want to fill it out and give your perspective on champs and everything like this and try and make sure they keep it on twitch and all this type of stuff then feel free to do so i, I do believe that they actually read this stuff whether they care that's another question but i i believe that it goes somewhere at the very least. There were also some leaked images coming out yesterday. These aren't the leaked images. These are the original images from Terminal and Scrapyard from back in the good old days. But they were some leaked images of seeming remakes of those maps coming to the new game. And this is the strange thing to me because I thought, to be honest, the year one of this game was going to be MW2 and year two of this game was going to be all the old school maps return to the game. They change up the, the weapons and all this type of stuff and that's what the year two of the game was going to be. But it turns out it's not a year two of the game. It's just going to be another new game but maybe those maps are going to be in that game instead so that's what we believe is going on right now and um you know these maps are going to be returning so it could be quite optimistic for next year already but it's obviously quite a while away until we see anything about the game and the game launches for this year these were the overall numbers as well from the cdl world championship or the playoffs as technically they're called which technically they are but still it's champs as far as i'm concerned just under 300k for the peak viewers not spectacular all things considered given that we had all the watch parties parties this year and stuff like this. Okay, there was no Nick Merckx, there was no Tim the Tatman, would have been over 300k with those watch parties included. But, um, you know, still, the World Championship, 300,000 viewers, it's not bad, is it? Let's be honest. And then, obviously, Optic, they were out on day three. The Seattle series at about 270k. Had they have made it further, had they have made it later on Saturday and into the Championship Sunday, or obviously the finals itself, then it would have been, you know, would have been pushing. If it was Optic phase finals, like, we could have been pushing 500k, possibly. So, you know, in a different reality, we'd have had some really mega numbers here but I still think pretty impressive and yeah the most viewed season is Daniel Sice on our main stage ever this season okay it's no brainer why that's the case right we've been on Twitch about the watch parties and hopefully they can keep that up as much as possible next year but we don't really know what the current rumors are in terms of whether the YouTube return is actually going to happen at this point just wanted to mention this from Sender thought was kind of cool that he's going to do a video when he gets back home reflecting on the season will be really interesting to listen to his perspective here on like working through the challenges right because it's super rare and I'm just incredibly impressed that New York managed to win at the start of the year, be the best team very briefly, fall off quite substantially. They got a top 12, didn't they, at Major 2, and I think like a top 8 at Major 3, to then fight their way back to being competitive and going back to back at the end of the year. Crazy stuff, to be honest. Also, Sender now has the second most championships as a coach in the league. Crowder still leads it up as 7 with FaZe. Sender now at 6 is really impressive, right? You're looking, um, you know, I guess at the Huntsman days when he was there during when it was Chicago Huntsman and then onwards to okay Optic Texas I guess last year and then this year the Newark Subliners so um, that's really impressive Dereal now has four actually as well with the Subliners last year and now three championships they won this year which is really impressive and Subliners really are showing that they are a serious elite tier organization here in terms of building rosters because out of what the last nine grand finals Subliners have been in five of them and they've won four of those tournaments so that is really impressive and also that now leaves Priester with the most at LAN wins in the CDL. Three this year on the Subliners, one a couple of years ago on the Minnesota Rocker, right, in 2021, and I think one LAN win with FaZe back in the Modern Warfare days before the pandemic happened. So Priester now leads everyone. I mean, think about this. Simp, Abizi, Cell, this trio, they've only won four LAN wins in the... Okay, they were dominant online a little bit in Cold War, but of the LAN events, they've only won four of them, and you know, that's tied with Hydra, Kiz, Simp, Abizi, Cell, Envoy, Octane, Draza, 
and he RCs at three, but Priest draws the most land wins at five, and even pre-CDL, like, he was a very solid player, so very impressive stuff from Priest there, and uh, it just took him to dip from Minnesota to Rocco. For him to finally get his mojo, it seems, back to a certain extent. Illy as well, he's doing a lot of Cold War chals. This seems to be the game of uh, preference right now for many of the players that they want to go back to Cold War and play it, which is good to see, and Illy's definitely on the grind. And right now, the players are going to be talking with each other. There'll be no, like, offers being thrown around yet by teams or anything. That's going to be a couple of weeks away. I believe the timeline, I think I made a small mistake in yesterday's video on the timeline. I'm pretty sure the way it worked last year is the teams have one week to choose whether they extend the players that are under the option that they have. And then one week after that, that's when all the players become free agents and then players can start getting signed, basically. So I believe the timeline is a little bit different. We don't actually know what it is, I believe, this year yet. I don't think we've had the official confirmation, but if it's the same as last year, that's roughly the timeline you're looking at where offers will start to be flying around pretty much in two weeks, right? Players will be starting to get signed and certainly the big name players. But before then, the players will be talking to each other behind the scenes, talking to coaches, general managers, each other, trying to figure out what's going on, what's going to happen, what the plans are, and I'm sure people are already putting some things in place. These are some of the big name unrestricted free agents. Technically, Dashi is a UFA. Maybe one of the key reasons he clapped back to Doug earlier today was because, look, he's a UFA. He needs to maintain his stock to a certain level. And okay, Doug's comments aren't really going to affect Dashi's stock too much because Dashi's Dashi, and if he was dropped, someone would pick him up very quickly on a very top team. But um, there's other players here, Octane as well. I think Envoy might be one of the most interesting players because I'm pretty sure that Optic, that, um, you know, FaZe, Surge, even Toronto maybe, might look at Envoy as a potential upgrade there. And there's maybe not as many teams that Octane could improve, but there are certainly a few, at least of the upper echelon teams. SMGs are just straight up more important most of the time. And that's why Pred has been a big discussion point. He's on Surge, not for long, right? He's going to go to one of the other teams. You would think Optic, Thieves, or Fades. That was my prediction before the tourney, that he'd go to one of those three teams, and maybe just two of those teams. Just to keep you guys updated, then, these are all the unrestricted free agents. That's what's going to make this offseason so crazy, is that you've got all of these players that are completely free to go wherever they like in a couple of weeks' time, which means that the conversations around that are going to be pretty wild. Many of them, I think, will get re-signed to their present team. Kismet, Dashi, you would think. But, um, you know, and also Vegas, don't know what they're going to plan to do. That's an interesting conversation as well. But further down the league that we're thinking about, maybe Max stays on Surge. I feel like he did well a chance to secure his spot for next year. Accuracy, don't know, debate about that. I think it'd be interesting to see him stay. But the issue is if you keep Mac and Accuracy, you're not going to get the talent of Sib and Pred again, are you? So that's when you run into problems. But is Pred actually going to join Optic as we all expected? It was meant to happen in December, January last year when Skump retired. They wanted Pred. It was on the verge of happening. Pred had not exactly had enough of these guys, but given the Optic offer was there, it makes sense that Pred decided to do what he did and wanted to leave. But they couldn't make it work with Seattle. They ended up having to stick together and it didn't really work out particularly well for anyone apart from Hook who got a good opportunity on Optic as a result. Now, we saw this tweet from Najot here where he tweets at, um, you know, Pred and says, you know, great character to try and shut down the crowd, say it F.U. Drus and all this stuff. And obviously Pred responded at the time and said, GG's brother crazy series. And obviously there's some motives in play here. Both Nadeshot and Pred are playing the game to a certain degree. Nadeshot knows all of his players are free agents. Envoy might get snapped up somewhere else. Kenny hasn't really been himself this year compared to what we usually expect him, especially end of season Kenny. This year, end of year Kenny didn't really appear. So SMG talent for the Thieves is a key concern that they've got to think about. They might be able to keep Envoy, but I don't think they will. I think he's going to get stolen somewhere else. So they would love Pred, obviously. If Thieves could get Pred, that would be a banger signing for them to achieve. And I think the Najot's playing the game and Pred is playing the game as such as well in these conversations. And then we get this from last night when Octane says, I love the off-season, we need a COD reality series to pass the time. Pred says, I'm down, and Octane's like, down under that is. So, you know, a little bit interesting, right? Just a bit of conversation here between Octane and Pred, and it just feels like there's, you know, it makes sense. Pred's phenomenal SMG talent, many top teams will want his services, and I think that if you're Octane, you're thinking, well, you know, my SMG line next year is a bit in flux right now. If I could have Pred, let's say Octane even stays on Thieves, which is not guaranteed, but you would think that he probably does stay on Thieves, given, um, you know, how much he liked that organization in the past. The other organizational piece that makes me believe this might be more possible than some are maybe giving credence for is the whole Novus debate. So Brandon Novus was the general manager for Seattle Surge when he built the team of Pred, Sib, Mac and Accuracy at the start of the Vanguard season. He then left after that year to go and join Thieves and 
now is building the team for Thieves again for this year. So these guys, Brandon and Pred, they have a relationship. I'm sure conversations are going down there. And I think there was even some people saying that there was some time over the last year or so that Pred said on stream that oh, the LA weather is so much better than Texas weather. And I, I think that's very far down the list of priorities for Pred in terms of choosing his next team. But it might at least be an interesting debate because Pred did say on the Stocksman's podcast a while ago now that he wants to make this decision for effectively the next three years. Wherever he decides to go now, that's going to be how it is for three years. He wants to build a legacy. He wants to win a lot of championships. And is there a chance that he looks at Optic and he thinks, you know, that organization, the culture, the way things have been there over the last few years, despite all the positive efforts that brings, you know, is it a guarantee you're going to win a lot? Is it a guarantee you're going to go down in Call of Duty history? Maybe that's not the case. Sonny, have you received any offers yet? Nah, it doesn't work like that. I haven't received any offers, but like, I mean, I might have that I don't know of. I gotta talk to my agent, but I mean, I may have received an offer, but I've been talking to players. I've been talking to a few players. So. so I just shared that clip there from Stanley where he says, look, there's no offers flying in yet, but he's discussing with players. Everyone's discussing with certain players. And uh, yeah, we'll see what Pred decides to do. To me, there are three candidates. I don't think he's going to be joining Toronto. I, you know, okay, Kleenex and Pred would be a nasty duo, but um, I kind of doubt it that that's going to happen. I think given what he said before, and he wants to go down and really just craft out a legacy and become one of the greatest of all time, joining Optic is a great way to achieve that. But also joining FaZe and joining Thieves is a great way to achieve that and in fairness over the last few years those orgs phase and thieves have won more than optic have i mean they've won world championships if you think about it right out of the last um you know four years all of the theoretical tier one teams phase thieves and even dallas empire they all won champs in the first three years new york won it this year and credit to them for doing so but of the you know the biggest brands in the league optic haven't delivered and maybe pred thinks you know what i'll join them i'll fix that team up and i'll take them back to where they belong or where they deserve to be and I imagine that, um, you know, he probably has thoughts along those lines of what he could be to Optic's fan base and to Call of Duty history if he was able to come in and really bring them back to consistent success like they've had back in the day. So I would maybe say that the most likely outcome that I see right now is that Pred joins Optic instead of Hook and maybe they make one more change, maybe they don't. That still seems like the possibility that Pred is most interested in doing based on what he said over the last few months and especially in the early part of the year when it was very clear and he was very straight up that he wanted to join that team. But I think there's a few reasons why Thieves might be very attractive. And also you've got to look at FaZe as well as just an option as well, because these guys made under $1 million this year in terms of total prize earnings for the first time in their history, which is pretty embarrassing, right? These guys are straight up washed, only making 880000 in prize money, but um, still less than they usually make. And is there a chance that if Slasher was to depart, they think, you know what, it's not working with just cycling out these main ARs every year. Let's put Cell to the main, Simp to the flex, Pred comes in with a BZ. I mean, that's very scary. Like, if that was an offer on Pred's doorstep and they were like, yeah, we want you to join FaZe, playing with Sigma BZ and Cell, like, and we're going to make it work. Can Pred say no to that? I mean, it's pretty nice offer, though. You would be expecting to win an awful lot in that case, and I think that maybe Pred will look at Thieves and think, well, he might not be so sure about joining Thieves unless he knows what the rest of the team is going to be. If they were saying, all right, we've got Envoy here, which would be a little bit strange, I think, with him and Pred, but, you know, whatever they decide to build on Thieves, they probably have to have a very good idea idea of what they're going to do before Pred will commit because if they're like oh yeah Pred join us but we're all free agents here anyway so we don't really know what our team of four is going to be Pred will be like mm, I'm not so sure about that right if you can tell me that I'm going to be with Octane, Kenny and Draza or something and it's going to be me as the fourth then okay I can think about it but if you don't really know what your team is going to be and Octane might get poached somewhere else then maybe he won't be so convinced so very much in Twitter your thoughts in the comment section below this I thought was pretty funny here from the flag breaking sources reveal that there is zero chance of Optic signing Jimbo, which, uh, yeah, might not set up their roster for next year in a particularly good spot. But very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.